So how would the side effect profile of salvage radiotherapy differ from the side effect of a man who is receiving radiotherapy without um, surgery before? So we're talking about giving radiation to cure somebody that, that has a newly diagnosed prostate cancer compared to someone that had their prostate removed, and now the cancer is coming back right where the prostate used to be, and uh, radiation is used for both purposes. Erectile dysfunction is more common in the first situation where men are being treated with the prostate in place, and uh, that's because the doses that are required to cure th uh, the cancer are higher and as a result, more men develop erectile dysfunction from the radiation. With skillfully applied radiation, uh, the other side effects like uh, uh, urinary problems and rectal problems have been pretty much sidestepped. In men that have relapsed disease, who are being treated for relapse, the risk of, and assuming they're still getting erections after surgery, the risk of erectile dysfunction is not as high, but there is a small risk of erectile dysfunction. And uh, in men that are um, completely continent of urine after surgery who are undergoing salvage radiation, most of them will not become incontinent, but there is a small risk of incontinence. So for salvage radiation, there's a small risk, uh, smaller risk of erectile dysfunction in it and incontinence. In the newly diagnosed, there's practically no risk of incontinence but a higher risk of erectile dysfunction. So our next viewer would like to know if hormone therapy is advisable if a patient has had um, any form of heart disease and has to take pills like Ramipril. So Ramipril I usually think of as uh, blood pressure medicine, not a heart medicine. Um, I see it, it could be used for heart purposes as well. Heart-related problems with testosterone deprivation, um, Lupron shots and the like, uh, seem to be caused by the fact that when men have no testosterone, their metabolism slows down and they start gaining weight, their blood pressure goes up, their blood sugar goes up, and all those things do translate into uh, more cardiovascular risk. Having a low testosterone per se by itself, if people are very careful with their diet and keep their blood pressure in control, all that sort of uh, thing, shouldn't translate into any increased risk of heart disease. People that are already overweight or have diabetes, it is uh, a concern to be giving them testosterone deprivation because uh, they've already shown that they really don't have the self-control and then you slow their metabolism down more and they put on more weight and uh, the risk of cardiovascular th uh, problems is going to go up. So it is something to consider. Uh, people simply should be counseled to be very fastidious and consistent with their diet and their exercise. And under those circumstances, if they are careful, uh, the risk of cardiovascular problems should be minimal or non-existent. Hey everyone, it's me, Alex, and our mascot, Hunter. You can check out his Instagram, Sir Hunter the Dow, at the link below. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and in fact, if this dog high fives me, high five, high five, can you high five me? Thank you. You have to subscribe. Go subscribe to the YouTube channel. He even thinks it's awesome. Also, don't forget to visit our website, pcri.org.